We already have two rules about the rent money. Remember, we pay on the fifth and expect full payment with no excuses. Sure, but I mean additional rules apart from those two. Okay, there's certainly no harm in that. Remember the problems we've had with people in the past. I think we should learn from those bad experiences. Y- you may have a point there. For example, you know that I like cooking, so I can propose a kitchen rule straight away. Every tenant must clean after use. We shouldn't allow what happened last time. You mean that guy who left all his dirty dishes piling up and food on the floor? Clean after use. We should write that down. I'm happy with that. And not only clean, but they also have to tidy up. We can't have them cluttering up our very small kitchen counter. I'm with you there. That will make life far more manageable. So tidy up is our second cooking rule, let's say. And now, can I tell you what really annoys me? Sure. Dirty tenants, those who just allow dirt and dust to build up around the house and don't care less. We've got to have a strict rule prohibiting that. What about a cleaning roster? We can make a list of everything that we expect to be done. Carpets vacuumed, furniture dusted, toilet cleaned, and so on. And everyone is required to take turns. First my turn, then your turn, then the third tenant's turn. This spreads the load so we can keep the apartment very clean. I'm happy with that. Otherwise, one person will be working harder than the others. But how often do we do it? Every day, twice a week, or once a week, or what? Every day. What do you think? Too often, I would say. Well, every three days, then. I don't know. We're, we're all busy with part-time jobs and study. I'd say that once a week is good enough. It's probably what most households do, anyway. All right, all right. Let's run with that, then. As long as we do clean regularly and well. OK, are there any other rules? What about music, loud TV, that sort of thing? I want absolute quiet at night because I go to bed early in order to get up early for my job. So, why don't we say no noise after, say, 11 at night? Earlier than that, 10 p.m. That's consistent with most rental properties and no overnight visitors either. You're right. That caused a lot of problems when the last tenant brought his drinking buddies in for the night. So we prohibit late night noise and overnight visitors as well. That sounds good to me. OK, Richard. If we want to advertise for an extra tenant for the third bedroom, there's a website with an online form here that we can fill out. That will speed things up. Good idea. In fact, let's do it now and get it over and done with. Sure. The first category here is gender. I guess that means we write male or female. I think I'd prefer a male. He'd fit in with us. One of the boys, something like that. Sure, but that might limit things, and I'd say a female might be just what this household needs. Why don't we say any and let fate decide? See who turns up and judge them as they come. OK, I'll type any. So now we move on to job. What sort of job do you want them to have? To me, it doesn't matter. Doctor, lawyer, cleaner. As long as they have a job, of course. Unemployed tenants can be a problem. Just type in must have. You mean a job? Yes. Must. OK, that's done. Now, how much should we ask them to pay? $180 would be about one third of the total rent. Uh, I'm doing the maths now with a calculator. The figure would be closer to $173.50. Well, let's round that up to the nearest five. I'll type in $175 and we can share the extra $1.50. Done. Now, finally, when can we let the new tenant move in? Immediately, I'd say. The sooner the better. Type in immediately. But I'm busy this week with my job, so I'm not in the mood to interview tenants right now. And anyway, we've had just you and me for so long, what does another couple of weeks matter? So, when would you like the tenant to move in, then? One week from now? Beginning of the month? March 1st? Later. Give it another four days at least. March the 5th is better for me. OK, I'll type that in. It should be fine. Any later than March the 8th, and I'll be too busy with my exams. And that's about it.
Hello, everyone. As new students having just arrived, it is important that you are conversant with some of the aspects of living safely here. Let me immediately say that, in contrast to the high crime rate in other cities, ours is very low. Nevertheless, there is some advice that would be considered prudent in even the safest of places. It is therefore in your interest to look at this map of the city and familiarise yourself with its areas, some of which may not be as safe as others, particularly at night. A little research now in this respect will obviously help you a great deal. For this reason, we have provided a variety of brochures and information leaflets, which we encourage you to take and read. In addition, you should talk to people you know, to your homestay parents and teachers, and get a feel for the situation both in the neighbourhood where you live and the city at large. Now, you should know about the police presence in this city. There are local police stations in every suburb, but not all of these are open 24 hours a day. For that, you need a main station, of which there are many, and you should familiarise yourself as to the location of the one nearest to you. Moving on, many of you might like to go out at night. So, you should also familiarise yourself with the public transport system. It could put you at risk if you are wandering around lost in the late hours of the night, particularly if you are a woman. Our city has a fairly good public transportation system, but not all of it operates necessarily to late hours. For this reason, you can avail yourself of the special late-night buses, known as night birds, which operate along most major routes. Again, collect one of the brochures on the table here for the night bird timetables. Finally, if you do feel there is an emergency, you can dial triple zero. However, this does not take you through to a police station, but rather an operator. This operator will question you as to the nature of the problem and then send your call through to the relevant department, police fire or ambulance, as the situation demands. This may take up valuable time, and for this reason, we suggest that you find the emergency number of the nearest main station to where you live. This will speed up the process should you need police services in the event of a serious problem. Having said all this, let me remind you once again that this is a very safe city, and we don't expect any problems to occur. Yet, it always pays to be prepared. On the same subject as being prepared for problems, it is a fact that the police cannot cover every part of the city at all times of the day. Thus, it is advisable for you to take some precautions and be prepared for any problems which may occur. There are less safe areas which you may inadvertently find yourself in and, through no fault of your own, be faced with difficulties. In this respect, some people advise that women in particular carry mace or pepper spray, which can be sprayed into the eyes of an assailant. However, please be informed that these are illegal and consequently cannot be purchased, constituting, as they do, an attack weapon. On that same theme, any knives or small arms, while perhaps being legal in your country, are illegal here and must not be carried on your person. One thing you can carry, however, is a personal siren. In the advent of a problem, you just push a button and the siren will sound loudly, drawing such attention that any assailant almost invariably flees immediately from the scene. Moving on, you may wish to stay out late to have fun or see the sights of this city at night, and we do not necessarily discourage that. However, we do advise that you confine yourself to areas that have sufficient street lighting or illumination. In the course of your activities, you may well meet strangers, but if this happens under clearly lit areas, visible to everyone in the vicinity, statistics prove that in almost all cases, nothing will go wrong, particularly if you carry your siren. Above all, the greatest rule is simply to exercise discretion and intelligence when you go about your business. 
All the rules that I have given are simply based on this, and by following them all, your stay here will be both enjoyable and safe.